Hello all. Welcome back. It's been a while. A couple weeks, I think, since my last video. Um, <clears throat> and you know what? I've missed you guys. Uh, but that's okay. So yeah, this is an afternoon review. It's the day before election day. I didn't work today because I had a doctor's appointment. And so I went to Kailua and I got lucky. I went to Whole Foods there and I found two remaining six packs of Anchor Christmas Ale. So the last two years I've missed it. Guess this year, you know, this year I'm no I'm gonna have to go like starting the beginning of September, I mean beginning of November, and just you know, as early as possible in November, because this stuff sells out before Thanksgiving here in Hawaii. Um, probably because the allocations are so low. I know it's one of those ones that you get awarded with um, by the distributor. And most people aren't carrying steam or any other anchor beers anymore. So, you know, there probably isn't very much allocation for the Christmas ale. So, guys, go and carry more anchor beers in Hawaii. Come on. I mean, you guys carry a lot of less great, you know, brewers. I'm not going to name names here because I don't like to shit talk too much. But anyways, it's great being back. There, I got another thing in the queue sometime, probably not within the next week, but the week after. It's, a, it's going to be a pretty busy week for me, uh, socially speaking, more or less. You know, I'm, I'm going to be occupied, well... Probably going to be occupied next week, too, come to think of it. But, yeah, it is what it is. And, um, so, yeah, I'm going to be doing a food review. That's going to be a surprise. And I'm kind of still brainstorming what I want to do on this channel besides liquor and beer reviews since I can no longer really afford to purchase all that much liquor or beer. <laughs> Those two sixers of um, those two sixers of the Christmas ale sent me back over thirty dollars, but you know what? That, that's a special thing, so I was willing to go and spend that money. But what is it that we are reviewing today? Well, I saw this. It's a local beer from Lanikai Brewing. I've actually, if you go and check, I've actually reviewed previous iterations of this. I think this is like the third iteration of a somewhat similar beer. And all of them are essentially pilsners or American lagers brewed with mamaki leaf, which is a Hawaiian leaf that is used to brew an herbal tea or tisane. Don't tea is the name of the plant, not the name of the beverage. Tea is the name of the plant, not the beverage. Tisane or tisane, or however you pronounce it, is the name of the steeped beverage. If you steep herbs in hot water. So T is Camilla Sinesis. Okay, this is one of my one of my you know bugaboos, as it were. I because I'm a heavy tea drinker. So yeah. So this uses Mamaki. This is 5.2 ABV. Don't know the IBUs. So let's just go and read the back a little bit. A party wave pilsner with Mamaki tea. A vibrant yellow German pilsner with a balanced Hallertau hop presence. Slightly sweet toasted biscuit and bread aromas are matched with earthy mamaki tea. And this was Best Buy 214.23. So, you know, still nice and fresh. Now, this one, you know, I think you might want to take a little grain of salt. It is... It's a bit of a gusher, you know? So, and also too, while I enjoyed the previous iterations and quite positively reviewed the middle iteration, which was an American lager as opposed to a Pilsner, more on that, um, you know, well, let's just get to it, okay? So, I'm gonna open it here. Now this, mind you, this can hasn't been shaken. No, oh, this one's not a gusher. It's only slightly foamy over there. It's not rising past the lid. Okay, and now for probably 
one of the most gentlest pours I can manage. Oopsie. Oh, yeah. You can see. Well, maybe not because it's slightly cloudy. But it is insanely carbonated. Here we go, as you can see here. I'll just top it off with the rest of this later. Insanely carbonated, slightly cloudy, with um, a bit of an overactive, fluffy white head. Crackery malts. Grassy to herbal hopping. <laughs> Bit of wet stone there. So yeah, it's a bit overactive. And a slight earthiness to him. Maki is very, not very apparent in the nose, but then like I said, it's mostly blowing off a lot of CO2 right now. I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to drink this when it's still foaming so crazy. So, bone dry. The finish, this is a bit over hopped, I would say, um, with the bittering hops. You know, I would have toned down the bittering hops and toned up the aromatic hops a little bit more, the bit more of the noble hops. It is, there. it's not really a clean finish when there is hop bitter, lasting hop bitterness. Insane carbonation bite that makes tasting the front a little bit difficult. Just going to get the rest of this in here. Fairly refreshing at least. Also, it's not really clean in that the mamaki really shows up in the long finish. It's um, this very earthy, kind of uh, earthy and slightly mm, leafy kind of taste there.
that sort of pers persists on the palate. Once it calms down a bit, the front to mid is pretty good. Um, I would say a decent, like a decent German Pilsner, bracingly dry. It's just I expect the the hops to clear at the end. You know, I, I don't like that sort of tannic feel and strong lasting bitterness on the palate as the long finish. sort of noble hop notes there in the top note here are fairly muted like I say like I've already said once you know if I I want the aromatic hops amped in this and the bittering hops tuned down a little bit in this and you know kind of fix whatever was up with the carbonation here Honestly, I think, you know, well, going towards a style, Pilsner, you know, it's kind of questionable when you have adjuncts in German beers that have sort of a history of being under Rehingsimbot, you know, that um, purity law. So nothing in the beer besides barley, water, yeast, and hops, you know, when you add something else... Um, it, it kind of, you know, kind of, it kind of breaks style to me a little bit. But even if it didn't, I think the Mamonic, Mamaki edition goes better in something that's a bit softer. Um, Czech Pilsner, you know, with that more, with that softer water profile and um, slightly sweeter malt presence. I, I think the Mamaki does better than does better with that than in something that is so intensely bone dry. In fact, you know, I kind of wonder if they amped up the bittering hops in this because, you know, this is in a can. They're trying to move to cans after selling in bombers for quite some time. And I'm wondering, if they're, you know, if like everything else in the world, they just tweak the bittering hops because that's what craft beer has become to normies now, is basically blasting your taste buds with hops. Also, too, I'm starting to get just very slightly congested, which is not something that happens with Pilsners, but it is something that happens with uh, very hoppy beers. Also says a clear, vibrant yellow. I don't know, guys. Does this look clear to you? Because it looks pretty darn cloudy to me. Maybe the filtration wasn't quite up to par, so a little bit of active yeast culture got into it. You know, that's why it's so actively carbonated and so intensely bone dry. But, um... 
yeah, I kind of want to see what this would be like on tap. The previous two iterations I had on tap. And like I said, both of them were much more satisfying to me than this one is. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like this or if there was some mild error um, in the production process. That said, not everything can be, you know, a winner. And it's not undrinkable. It's just not to style, and it has some flaws to it, I find. Um, your mileage may vary. You know, um, I don't like having to go, and I think this is the first time I've given anything other than a good to stellar review to something from Lanikai Brewing, but gotta be honest, they can't hit every, no brewery can hit everything out of the park so far as I'm concerned, and everyone's human. It's still drinkable. Um, bit on the pricey side, though. So four of these pint cans were about $15. So kind of expensive, even by uh, local beer standards. That said, inflation is probably biting into them harder because they are centered in Kailua, in which literally the massive landowner is driving people out of business by not lowering the insane the insane rents in the town center, um, despite the fact that inflation and tourism hasn't returned to its pre-COVID, you know, thing. You know, only the Japanese tourists are only starting now to return little by little. And it's kind of sad to see all these pukas or holes in the storefronts of Kailua, but yeah, Alexander and Baldwin, you guys need to go and like face reality, you know, as a landowner and basically owner of the entire commercial, 95% of the commercial properties inside of a town, you guys have a responsibility to, you know, keep the community alive and you know, not just go and get the maximum profits, especially since nobody's going to make the maximum profits nowadays. You guys can't go out of business because landowners never go out of business, but lots of small business owners can. And when franchise businesses or chain businesses start closing, you know something's wrong, guys, okay? Anyways, 20 minutes. God, I'm still going on and on. Yeah, party wave. Kind of flawed. You know, um, but, you know, not flawed to the point where it's undrinkable. And that, folks, is your beer review for this afternoon. Cheers.